Okay, let's look at station number two. I've got two terms here. I'm looking for a common factor. There isn't one, so then I move on. It's not a trinomial. It's a difference of two squares. It's a difference because of the subtraction. Two squares because there's two terms, and each one is a perfect square. So that's how we're going to solve it. The first thing you need to know is the structure when it's a difference of two squares. We know it's going to start out as two terms times two terms, right? And we know one's going to be plus and one's going to be a minus. The first ones here, they match. They come from the square root of the first guy. So the square root of x squared is x. The second one here in both comes from the square root of 64. So that's going to be 8, and that's going to be 8. So that's our final answer. That's how we do different to two squares. All right. Uh, we've got three terms. We're looking for a common factor. It looks like a 2 can divide out of all of those. Again, don't forget to write down the thing you're actually dividing out as your first factor. My second factor is what I get once I divide them all by 2. So over here, I get 2n squared. Over here, uh, 2 goes into 10. I get a negative 5n. Then here, I get plus 3. Since that's an n squared, I can factor further. I've got an a is not 1, so I've got to do a times the c to get me a 6. Now I'm looking for, uh, so the 2 times the 3 gives me the 6, right? Now I'm looking for numbers that multiply to 6 but add to negative 5. So I'll go 1 and 6, 2 and 3, uh, and that's the end of my list. Negative 1 and negative 6, negative 2, negative 3. Uh, these are the ones that add to negative 5. So now when a is not 1, what I do is I split that linear term. So it's got negative 2 and negative 3. So if I go negative 3n minus 2n, that's a bad choice because when I try to common factor the 2 and the 3, they don't go well together. And when I try to common factor them here again, they don't go well together. So I can switch around and go minus 2n minus 3n. That's a much better choice because now when I factor by grouping, those two go together well and these two go together well. So let's do our factor by grouping. That 2 comes along for the ride. Here I'm going to common factor out a 2n. I have to remember I have to show what I'm dividing out. If I'm dividing out a 2n, I write it first and then in the parentheses I put what I get. So if I divide by a 2n, I'm going to get the 2's cancel and there's one n that's gone. So I have n and that's going to be minus 1. Over here I'm going to factor out a minus 3. So I get uh, an n minus 1 again. Um, let me do the color coding thing. So this was the common factor that goes with that. This was the common factor that goes with the white part. OK, so now I've got my 2 times n minus 1 is common in both of these. So I divide it out times what's left, 2n minus 3. All right, moving along to solve this guy. Um, I cannot isolate the variable because I've got a t squared and a t in it. So it's going to be zero product property. Zero product property says I need to get um, one side has to be equal to zero and the other side has to be a product. So first I'm going to make this right side equal to zero. I'm going to subtract 95 and add 3t to both sides. So if I add 3t, it's going to go with the t. If I subtract 95, it's going to go there. So I end up with t squared plus 3t minus 95. So I'm halfway to being able to apply the zero product property. Um, I've got it equal to zero, but now I need the left side to be a product, which means multiplication. I see that it's a trinomial where a is 1, so I know the structure is t and t. So now I just got to figure out numbers that multiply to negative, um, oh that should be a 90, not a 95. Numbers that multiply to negative 90, but add to 3. So um, I've got 10 and negative 9, negative uh, 10 and positive 9. Uh, I've got 45 and negative 2, negative 45 and 2. Okay. Oh, this should be, sorry, I also added wrong here. Uh, the 40 plus the 3 is a 43t. So they have to add to 43. So if I look at this list, this is the winner. Those add to 43, so it's going to be t plus 45 and t minus 2. Now I can apply the zero product 
property once I have it set up to do so. The zero product property says that if I have a product, two things times each other, equaling zero, then if either one is zero, so if this part of the product is zero, or if this part of the product is zero, uh, then those will be my solutions. So I solve each one of these, I get t equals negative 45, I get t equals two, and those are my two solutions. That's station number two.